This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Um, you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. da -na -na this is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. Welcome to DBL. Good morning. All right. I'm ready to go. Why are you talking like that? I thought we, I had a joke ready. Oh, okay. I'm ready to go. It was good, but the, you delivered it bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't deliver it well. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. We are starting off today with a controversial new law that could be passed today in the House. It is called a Parents Bill of Rights that would guarantee parents across and access to information across their children's education. Some of those rights include full access to class curriculums, reading lists, library books, and the school's budget. This echoes similar <laughs> laws passed in states like Florida, but sometimes that parental control can come with unintended consequences. Like this story you might not have heard. This is a Florida principal who was forced to resign after receiving complaints from three parents. They were upset that Michelangelo's statue of David was being taught in sixth grade art history class because they said it was pornographic and quote, upset their children. <sighs> what do we think of this new law? Should parents be able to control what's being taught in schools? This probably stems from COVID, them having a chance to see what's it their students are learning. You are a teacher, a father, you're funny, you're smart. Yeah, look, I wow. appreciate it. I don't know if that was the intro to my Tinder box. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was something because else. Because you really are wrapped up in all of this. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's, it's amazing, Jeff, where we are now as parents, but we are now, we're talking about three parents that have changed this. This is what they talk about when they say minoritarian rule, when a few people are going to change things for the, the bulk. So this is going to affect your kids. And you wouldn't know, Jeff, because you're enjoying your life with your partner and your kids, and you're out planning things for the weekend. And while we're doing that, People have set siege to our libraries, to our teachers, who are now asked to not mention any kind of gender affirmation or anything that has to do with that. They're not allowed to show the, uh, to wear certain things. They cannot post things on their Instagram. Uh, if there's a school shooting, they are being asked to not only know what to do, but in certain states to arm themselves and take shooting classes on the weekends. And when you're not done with that, right after COVID, you can have a bunch of crazy people screaming directly in your face at a school board meeting. So I ask you, Jeff, with the pay that goes along with being a teacher and the stress that goes along with being a teacher, none of which I've mentioned, which is just different kids growing up, trying to make sure that you set these kids on a, a great path. Who in the hell would be a teacher on this planet, Jeff? I have, it, no, I have it, no idea. It, it seems like it's the point. Yes, it, it put a legal, you didn't, you didn't mention legal process, right? right. Put, adding getting sued along with the school board right. on top of that if you treat their child in some certain way. You're I, Italian. Are you going to show your kids the statute of David? <laughs> yeah, all Italians show their kid penises. You yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what that is doing with you. But anyways, uh, what I was trying to say, what was I saying? What are you talking about? I'm not on my mind and all I see is no, you're the statue of about, David. You're talking about being a parent in the age where Yeah, okay, so what I was saying work. was uh, I'm very aware of what's happening in my child's classroom. I talk with the teachers. We s look at what their curriculum is going to be, where their goal is for my kids specifically. We're very aware of our students' education or uh, my child's education. So I don't know if they're parenting from afar and just trying to get into a business like a lot of people that they don't belong in. But again, I've always talked about travel, maybe to your point, I'm gonna bring my kids around the world. I'm gonna bring my kids to Italy, to the Vatican, to see these statues in person. That is history. That is what my kids should learn. That's what everybody should learn, right? To say you're gonna ban something like this or you don't want your kids looking at this is ridiculous in I, my mind. Right. Ridiculous and that we're doing the story is ridiculous. I agree and just as an art history person I just want everyone to know, know that there's a difference between pornography and nakedness and nudity which is part of an art world that is important in culture. So we're going to have a citizenry and a group of kids that grow up to not know culture, to not know other countries, to not know the idea of what art. Michelangelo dissected corpses to find the actual anatomy. That's why Michael's so famous because every single thing in muscle is perfect. It's important and it's uh, David, excuse me, not Michelangelo. Michelangelo created David. Okay. Anywho, you're, you're too Jewish. much in my ear. I know. There's too much going on in my ear. All right. Another angle to this whole story has to do with what <laughs> books are allowed in libraries and schools. Last year, book bans reached an all-time high, according to the American Library Association. There are more than 1,200 challenges to books in libraries. Plus, librarians from all across the country have made complaints about being harassed or threatened with violence 
because of these books. Now, if you take a look at the most banned books last year, the majority included LGBTQ plus or racial themes. Meantime, a school district in Utah is meeting to discuss banning the Bible in schools. A parent complained that the Bible included material that should be banned based on a new law about sensitive materials in schools. The parent argued that the Bible contains stories about rape, incest, prostitution, and more, all of which is not appropriate for children. Of course, there's also violence. So what do you think of all these books being banned? Should the Bible be included? Would you guys be upset if your kids were going to a school in which the bluest eye to kill a mockingbird slaughterhouse five if those were banned yes what yes. would you do what would you feel i don't know i mean i'm i guess i'm gonna have to deal with this problem right i tried to avoid as long as i can there's six and four it's around it's the be corner yep. right but i'm very like i said i'm very aware of what's going on in my child's classroom so if something like this happened maybe during one of those conferences i'd say why and maybe they'd explain well the board has to do this because they feel certain pressures I don't like that. I don't like it. It's part of the world. It's, again, part of our history. It teaches a lesson. You know what I mean? Lord of the Flies? I mean, that's what would happen if this world went chaotic, right? It's just there's a pecking order. Things like that would happen. People don't want to look at that it's and a think. show about hierarchy. A, a of course. About, yes. Of course. And it's like, listen, you just learned something about life. What happened to, like, respecting certain positions? We don't have that respect anymore. A principal, a teacher, maybe what they're doing because they went to school for exactly. 10 years about it. Exactly. Maybe they know something exactly. more about it than you. By the way, why don't you have a job? Why are you always here on Tuesday? Don't you have anything to do? Yeah. What about your craft? Le let the teachers teach because we're going to have no teachers left, to Al's point. I agree. Yeah. And what do you think about, like, just going sort of backwards? I mean, I don't think it's sort of backwards. I think this, we, we talked about this, and Jeff, we talked about this maybe, I would say maybe three weeks ago, and Jeff, you kept saying, you know, these are, these are crazy people in small places, and I, you know, I agreed with you, but I was like, this is, the, the things we're talking about now, this is in the state capitol in Florida, yeah. and this is what happened. The reason you didn't know that, Jeff, is because you're living your life. Right. Because now we're going to start yeah. basing people, we're going to start basing curriculums based on people's opinion, because this isn't fact, because if they were worried about facts, they would also be have something to say about uh, organic chemistry and science and, uh, you know, computer technology. But that's not the field that they feel like they can wade into because they're not an expert in that field either. Right. But it's just more obvious. So you stay in this like, I don't like the way that looks. I don't like the way that sounds. I don't like the title of that book. And it just, it's just gone because now, uh, you know, two or three people can now affect the curriculum. And now we have proof that teachers are losing their jobs. How long until some teachers start getting prosecuted? And yeah, that's and it. shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's that, not talk about that. Right. Great yeah. point. I was just going to bring that up. Shot? Let's talk about what's really important. Right. right? Let the teachers teach. Let's worry about how we're going to stop these school shootings or minimize them. Exactly. Because people are getting sued because their kid, who is out of their mind, is allowed to stay in school because the school district doesn't want to get sued. We have come, and I know you hate the woke culture and stuff, but the pendulum, again, a Tory analogy, has gone so far that. School boards, school teachers, major businesses, ma any business, Nike, anything that you could think of, major production companies, executive producers, they're scared to lose their job. So they have to fire people based on certain little things that they might have said or to get canceled. Let's get rid of that person. That will solve the problem. That's not solving the problem. It's like ignoring, That's not solving the problem. I agree with you. And just so you know, we fought a war against fascism, which was book burning and banning books and all this stuff. And I would just like to say, in Germany, in Berlin, many students, I think 22% of them didn't know enough about the Holocaust in the 90s. They made it a required course wow. so that you don't forget history. Is Fahrenheit, is Fahrenheit 451 on the banned book? A absolutely. The and guess what it's the about? The irony of that is Burning books. staggering. Fahrenheit 451 is the staggering. temperature in which paper burns and that's what it is And let about. me tell you something. As a kid, stuff. if you banned a book and I don't even like books, what is the first book that I'm going to go yeah, read? Of course, of yeah. course. Absolutely. All right. Coming 1984 up on, was on there. What is that? I know George Orwell. Oh, of course. Yeah. All these Crazy. that tell us about the future. All right, coming up on DBL, our interview with actor Rob Riggle. How did he get involved in a documentary about saving the environment? And more odd moments at the Gwyneth Paltrow ski crash trial. Wait until you hear about the email that the accuser sent afterwards that's being used as evidence. Somebody roll the clip. Let's make sure we have Jeff's sex tape. Wow, things are getting spicy here. At <laughs> Cold-hearted snake, look into his eyes. Let's that roll that again, right. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Gotcha. Wait, it's, I didn't say it was. Okay, no, so we're. Um, I said Italy. Travel. You said in Italy and the Vatican. People talk Italy. about. Um, banning books. And if you didn't know which ones, Catcher in the Rye. Um, we have Fahrenheit 451, Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, and then then many books about um, LGBTQ kids. Um, one called This Book Is Gay that was written by someone who went to my uh, high school. Um, there, there are penises everywhere. I will be honest with you. I spent a year in Italy studying abroad in Florence, and I all I saw were beautiful yeah, pieces yeah. of art about the human body. Yeah. Roman yeah. culture, um, uh, uh, Renaissance, is about the body, the human body, the way it moves, the arms, the shoulders. Would the body the entire be, uh, like, is that, is that possible? I mean. Probably not okay. There was a famous Chinese exhibit in which they stripped down bodies and you could see the muscles, with, and that was scientifically fascinating for me as a kid. Would that be banned? No. Jeff, Al brought well, it, it up. Don't fall asleep. It might make some people uncomfortable. Right. Well, <laughs> the Bible is a great example because if you talk about a violent sexual book, that's number one in many people's opinions. Kids, and I'm not babies, going. All kinds of stuff. Horrendous. I mean, so he's proving a point that teacher what? or that parent isn't saying I hate the Bible. He's saying, look at the slippery slope that you're doing. But look it also that. creates the culture where you can start to get rid of things in history that you don't want to teach either, which we've already See, absolutely. we've already starting to get to. Like you know, everybody wants to focus on Parks. World War II because that was like probably the last legitimate war that we fought for a good reason. But before and after that, do we? I mean, every part of world history is traumatizing. Yeah. And, and it doesn't have, I mean, it, it, you know, world history, Jeff, just like the, what happened in the killing fields. But you fields. have to know about it's, it. Yeah, you, what if you don't you know? Have to know? What about happens it? if you don't know? And let me tell you something. It happens My kids again. that at six and four being on YouTube is way worse than reading. Friday, that was a picture of Robert Camera Guy framed on Kelly's desk. Was that, Very nice. But the ironic part is Rob's, Rob's the camera guy filming his picture. Right. That's very <laughs> meta, Rob. Very, very meta. That's what I said. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, Rob. Very good wow. job, buddy. Met up Rob on this on this Friday. Very All right. Talented. Let's talk about this thing that I thought would never get as much legs as it has. The trial involving Gwyneth Paltrow. It continues today in Utah. Again, she's being sued by a man she says she crashed into him, um, says she crashed into him on a ski hill, excuse me. So here's Gwyneth's look for the day. Long beachy waves with a black buttoned up shirt. Boo. <laughs> this is her, she looked way better she than the couple days. She looked like a boss days. yesterday. She looks good. Her lawyer asked the judge though if her security team could give some treats to the courtroom bailiffs for being so helpful during the trial. The judge shot that down. Gwyneth's lawyer also presented an email as evidence that the man sent to his daughter after the crash with I'm famous in the subject line. Hmm. It also apparently included a link to a GoPro footage of the crash, but that video has disappeared. Bum, mm. bum, bum. I don't know. I don't know if that was if I was in a crash involving a famous person, Jeff, and I had footage saying that I was in the right. I don't know if that footage would be lost. Yeah. I yeah. don't know about that. Can I, I snap more? I, think I, I would, can't even yeah, snap more. Yeah, that would, that's what the external hard drive's for. You say, <laughs> back that up. Like, how do we lose that footage, Jeff? Please explain to me. I don't know. I was, <laughs> I, I was going somewhere else with back that up. It's yeah. Friday. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, this is getting ridiculous. To, right. This is just ridiculous. And we're showing when it's outfits now. I mean, there's a million other things. I understand there's two sides to every story. It doesn't seem to be in this case, okay? Where is that video? If you want to prove that you're right, show the video. This doesn't even go to court. Right. They settle out of court. Right. Here's the video. You crash into my client. How much you want to pay? Right. That's the end of it. This is ridiculous. It's being dragged on. It's being making a mockery of the courtroom. Again. I question the judge's decision to air this whole thing. No one's coming after the judge in this whole thing. People should. I question the judge. Yeah, the judge clearly wanted to be famous. Yeah, I mean, I Judge question. Ito clearly, it seems. It starts with Ito. I always think like, about yeah, Ito. But I think that's a different situation. Totally. Right, but he, it, there's ways to remove yourself. Like but I, media circuses are similar in both cases. Look, One is, of course, of a much look, more look at our thing. Look at your partner. Your partner, Brooks, wouldn't appear on camera if he had a legal summons to... <laughs> 
your partner was on uh, one one of the biggest TV shows in the in the world at the time. Seriously, and it's like yes, if you want to be front and center, you can. If you want to be way behind the camera, you can. There is a definite thought behind this. But uh, judges are people too. They want to have careers after this. There's a lot of shows where you can get uh, a daytime judgeship show from all this. Yeah. Remember Judge Mills Lane so and all, all these people get famous from this. And I think there's people are thinking about their careers and to think that a judge is just a Above it all, I think it is really uh, juvenile and naive, even though maybe we, we wanted wish it Mills was. Lane was a judge? Yeah. Wasn't he a ref for yes. a boxer? He was a ref and a judge? The Judge Mills Lane show, bro. Come on, man. I remember that, but I thought he was a ref, like he a was. professional referee. He refed some of the biggest boxing matches of all time. Oh, look at that guy. Yeah, he had a great life. With uh, all the irons in the fire. Yeah. I think at some point, though, at some point, Gwyneth is going to be, it's going to be used in her favor. This is all going to start being... Right. She's going to use this as strategy. Do you think that they might make uh, uh, prove a point and try and hit him with some punitive advantages for wasting the court's time? Could be. I mean, this could be an example set. When you have a pub uh, public figure, that's what happens. You know what I mean? Do you? Coming up on TV. <laughs> Sorry, we talked with actor Rob Riggle. What was it like behind the scenes of the comedy classic All oh, Step Brothers? Nearly every business in the U.S. is a small business, but almost half of them fail within the first five years. So it's understandable why some owners would jump at the chance to get free money from the federal government. Verify viewer Byron tagged us on social media to share several examples of ads offering thousands in grants and loans to small business owners and wants to know if they're legit. So Byron, let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Small Business Administration, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, which administers grants.gov, and several reverse image searches. We found numerous examples of posts like the one Byron shared. Many of them appear on Facebook networking groups for small business owners. So let's look into this one that was posted in a group for Houston Black-owned restaurants and food trucks. The post was created by Janet Billy, but a reverse image search of her profile pic eventually led us to not a Houston food truck owner, but a Los Angeles area adult film star who warns on her Twitter profile, don't fall for scammers pretending to be me. So no, this ad is not real. The SBA says there are legit brokers who help owners get loans, but they're strictly regulated. Real brokers only charge a small percentage in fees for loans and don't charge an upfront fee. It's free to apply for federal grants. Be skeptical of anyone who guarantees acceptance and that you can get your money in a few hours. It takes at least a week to register for a grant, and loans can take even longer to process. You can learn more about federal loans on the SBA's website and grants on grants.gov. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter answers your questions, clarifies what's true and false, and even includes a daily fun fact. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. It's no wonder things are looking a little grim for planet Earth. But the world is starting to wake up and recognize the dangers threatening Earth's health. That's a good thing. However, is it too late to reverse the damage? More importantly, is there a better way going forward? Welcome back. We all love whenever Rob Riggle pops up in a movie, a TV show, or even as a host. And with the new documentary, Plastic Earth, he's now helping make the world a better place. Earlier, we spoke with him about solving the plastic problem. Take a look. Welcome back to the show, yes. Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle! Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Rob, let's jump right in. So excited to talk to you today. One of my favorite movies of all time is Step Brothers, and I see the poster right behind you there. <laughs> yep, yep. Does, does anyone ever come up to you? Because, Rob, the first thing I want to mention to you is the Catalina kind of little wine mixer, like in that, and just go, pow! <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, I get a lot of that. I get a lot of, pow, pow! Uh, requests. <laughs> and I get a lot of, uh, people screaming pow at me at very awkward times, uh, which always alarms me, but it's uh, it's always flattering, I guess. Yeah, I love And I do watch the outtake too and there's one specifically specifically with you and Will Farrow like when you said you're gonna get him right in his suck hole and then you start laughing <laughs> how much of that how much of that is made up on the spot 
so much uh, wow. is made up, uh, especially when you work with like, you know, Adam McKay and Will Ferrell, yeah. these guys are improvisers and they came up doing improv. Um, and, and myself, I'm, I'm an improviser as well. So for us, it's just a big playground. And uh, we try to make each other laugh. We try to come up with the most unusual, ridiculous thing we can. And generally, it, it makes us laugh. And if it makes us laugh, that's a good that's a barometer for uh, if it stays in the movie or not. Hilarious stuff, man. Hilarious. That's I so love good. it. That's awesome. And you have such a cool backstory. I thought I had a weird backstory. I was a middle school teacher, then a comic, then a talk show host. You were a Marine, then a comedy writer, and now you're just a household name, A-list celebrity. How did this happen? Walk us through it. Oh my gosh, uh, it's such a long story. I'll try to give you a Reader's Digest version. Basically, um, uh, I was a theater and film major at the University of Kansas. Uh, I, I've always been a fan of comedy and acting, and I wanted to be an actor. I just didn't think it was possible. So, you know, um, I also had another dream, and that was to serve. So uh, while I was in college, I had my pilot's license. I got a guaranteed flight contract with the Marine Corps. When I graduated, I, I went through, you know, officer candidate school, went through flight school, all that good stuff, but then uh, changed to become a ground officer so that I could then pursue comedy and acting because ultimately that's what my dream was. Uh, and so that's what I wanted to do. But I wanted to do both. And I was lucky enough that we live in a, a great country where I could do both. Wow. Thank you for your service. I just made my bed this morning. That's all I did. That's unbelievable. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, I'm that's starting. A that's, the way. that's true. Uh, you, let's talk about this. You're narrating a new documentary called Plastic Earth. Now, when we think of Rob Riggle, I'm not going to say environmentalist is the first thing that comes to my mind, right? What made you get involved with this? Talk to us. Yeah, well, it's a good reason. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't classify myself as an environmentalist. Uh, I would cl classify myself as uh, a regular, uh, Joe Citizen, yeah. uh, someone who's pretty reasonable minded. Um, the, the people that made this, uh, uh, Janice Overbeck and, and Jack Winch, they, they did a wonderful job putting together this, together this film and they've done a tremendous amount of research and, and, and they've really dove into the details on this film. And so as a result, they did a great job educating me yeah. uh, about what's going on with plastics specifically. Um, and and I, I liked it. I liked the way they approached this film. This film is about um, uh, solutions. It's a solutions-based film. It's not a finger-wagging, uh, shame-blame political football. I think there's too much of that, mm -hmm. and I think because of that, no one listens anymore. Right. Yeah. And the simple truth is, we have a problem. We got a plastic problem. And here's the thing: I love plastics. I need plastics. We all use them. So don't point your finger at me because every time I go to the grocery store, that's the only choices mm -hmm. I have is plastic. So, so th what I appreciate about this film is they talk about solutions, and it doesn't matter where you come from, what you what you do. The solutions is what we need to talk about. So that's why I really appreciate and why I got on board is the way they approached it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank and, you, and Rob, you know you always make us laugh, but now we love how you're helping get the word out about this. So thank you again, <laughs> DBL Nation. See Rob narrating Plastic Earth now available on video on demand. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, Rob. Rick thank you, guys. One in 10 Americans has some form of unclaimed property. Usually it's money left in an old checking account or a final check from a former employer. There are even companies that will help you find this money for a fee. Verify viewer Eric texted us to say one of those companies contacted him and wants to know if he really needs to use one of those services. So Eric, let's verify. Can you search and claim unclaimed property for free? Our sources are the National Association of Unclaimed Property Administrators, Experian, and the Better Business Bureau. When money or property goes unclaimed, it must be turned over to the state. But here's the thing, you don't need to pay a company to help you find and claim money. Each state maintains its own unclaimed property website where you can search for your name. You can also visit missingmoney.com to search all states at once. From there, you can file a claim with each state that has your money. So yes, you can search and claim unclaimed property for free. Experian and the BBB say to watch out for scammers who will say you have unclaimed money in an attempt to get you to reveal your personal information. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Officials are putting out warnings about an emerging fungus. It's called Canada Oris, and the CDC says it, quote, presents a serious global health threat. So what is it and who's at risk? Let's verify with the help of these sources, including the CDC and the Virginia Department of Health. 
Candida auris is a type of yeast that can cause severe illness in hospitalized patients. It can infect multiple parts of the body, including ears, wounds, and the bloodstream, and the symptoms vary. The fungus is also hard to identify with normal lab techniques, so it's tricky to track, but the number of cases is growing. It's also often resistant to multiple antifungal drugs. People with weakened immune systems or who have been hospitalized for long periods seem to be most at risk. In our area, according to the Virginia Department of Health, cases are low, only 14 in Virginia last month. Even with the resistance, though, our experts say there are drugs that work against the fungus. And with proper PPE and cleaning, hospitals can keep it from spreading. Plus, the fungus can be harmless for many healthy people, colonizing the skin without causing infection. So for most of us, there's not much to worry about. Congrats, you have the least busted bracket. And you just won big in your office's March Madness pool. So what are you going to do with the money? Some people online claim that office pool winnings are actually taxable income. So let's verify. Our sources are the Internal Revenue Service and Mark Stieber, Chief Tax Information Officer at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Most forms of income are taxed by the IRS, and that includes your winnings from that office pool or bracket challenge. Tax expert Mark Stieber says no win is too small for Uncle Sam. Even one dollar is technically taxable under the Internal Revenue Code. According to the IRS, gambling income includes the fair market value of prizes such as cars and trips, not just cash. So we can verify, yes, March Madness bracket winnings are taxable, including those from your informal office pool. With your Fast Fact, I'm Ariande Till. Welcome back. Spring has officially sprung, and that means you might be out driving more. Huh. But before you start planning that picnic, we've got some tips to keep your car running smooth for the whole season. That's today's auto alert sponsored by Ox Car Care. First up, change that oil. This is a no brainer after a long winter. Next, check those tires. Consider getting new ones if they're wearing down. And of course, have your battery checked in the spring to prevent it from failing in the colder months later in the year. Ox Car Care is dedicated to providing you with an amazing auto protection plan that works with your budget. If you're looking for better car care, give them a call 1-800-946-5040. So just so you know, we have brackets here at DBL. Al is in dead last. Yes. <laughs> I am in seventh. You are winning the nine news bracket. Am I right? Don't jinx it. Okay, don't. Okay, for, this is all for March Madness for the NCAA. Do you have any predictions for today? Um, I think that Connecticut is going to win. They played yesterday and they did win. Yeah, so against Arkansas, of, uh... and they're going to also win tomorrow. Okay. Then what about today? I think it's definitely going to be um, like Gonzaga versus they already played, they played yesterday. TCU. Hmm. And SPV is out of the tournament. OMG is also playing. <laughs> yes, okay. OMG is also out of the tournament. <laughs> I like guys, San Diego State today. San Diego, what do you think for today? Um, I'm glad we have two days off. There we go. <laughs> he just wants to be away from me. <laughs> DBL is new every day. We will see you same time, same place Monday. Please be good to yourselves. Be good to your brackets. Let us know if you're winning. I have Texas winning the whole Did thing. You see the little self random. Jam. What's that? Little self just walked in. I'm so sorry.